name's Ben Shockman. I'm the Director of International Human Rights Advocacy with uh, the Human Rights Law Resource Centre, which is a small specialist uh, human rights NGO that operates uh, in Australia. The organisation that, that I work for does quite a lot of work uh, engaging the international human rights mechanisms uh, and trying to use them to affect change on the ground at home. So the course was very interesting to me because it was an opportunity to further consolidate some knowledge that I had already developed, uh, but also to, I guess, demystify the United Nations system to learn a little bit more about the other mechanisms that I wasn't as familiar with, uh, but importantly as well to establish relationships and networks with uh, other organisations and, and other individuals here in Geneva. I think probably the major learning for me was really the, the, the demystifying of the United Nations system. I work in a country that's all the way around the other side of the world, so quite often uh, Geneva and the United Nations is uh, feels very far away both geographically but also uh, I guess practically in terms of the work and how we conceptually understand it. So the key learning really was to be able to, to come here and to see the, the committees in action to understand how they work uh, but also obviously to meet with other human rights defenders who are engaged in uh, very similar work but obviously in, in domestic contexts. So that was probably one of the key learnings that, that I brought out of the involvement in the course itself uh, and obviously there are also very specific learnings in terms of uh, particular understandings of the ways in which mechanisms work, uh, why you would use particular mechanisms rather than, than others. So those types of questions I think are very important for NGOs because uh, you can sometimes waste a lot of time and a lot of resources perhaps engaging with mechanisms that might not be as appropriate. So. Uh, an in-depth understanding of, of the importance of mechanisms and how they can be useful is uh, crucial for, for NGOs and human rights defenders working on the ground. Our organisation works in, in a number of different ways. Uh, quite often we'll do work in our own right, in our own capacity, but um, the majority of our work is done in partnership and in collaboration with, uh, I guess, other organisations that don't have that specific human rights uh, experience or understanding of the system. So the role that we play is to bring some of that expertise and, and experience to assist them to engage in the mechanisms themselves. So in that sense, I guess the work that we do is in some ways similar to the work of the ISHR. So uh, we've been able to, uh, I guess, learn and observe the work of ISHR and incorporate some of, uh, some of those benefits into the work that, that we do as well. One of the key projects that I was involved in uh, following the ISHR course was essentially the, the development of a, a coalition to uh, to prepare and to submit two comprehensive reports to, to different NGO committees that were in relation to Australia's compliance with both the Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Uh, so the, the preparation of the really comprehensive NGO reports in the Australian context uh, I guess has been extremely invaluable from a, a range of perspectives. Um, uh, first of all the coalition building itself was really important from the perspective of uh, bringing together organisations who perhaps hadn't, hadn't worked together. So that instrumental uh, involvement of organisations in the coalition is, is one uh, fantastic outcome in and of itself. Uh, the reports themselves were, were very much uh, lauded by both the Human Rights Committee and the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. And uh, we very proudly um, now um, refer to the fact that the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights talks about our report as being the best NGO report that they've ever received and an example of best practice from an NGO perspective. So uh, I guess uh, in an even broader sense, now we are contacted by a lot of organisations from other countries who are in the process of preparing reports and we can uh, give them our report and talk about our experiences and learning. So that's, that's another really valuable outcome as well. Uh, but I guess in terms of the, the practical uh, impact on the ground in Australia, which is obviously the primary purpose of the development of those types of reports is that we now really have a really comprehensive uh, resource that's, that's an action plan. It's, a, uh, it's an action plan for government on what it needs to do, what steps it needs to take to ensure the better protection and promotion of human rights. And uh, I guess also because we had such a coalition involved, the government has taken those recommendations uh, very seriously and very happily we have a government that is working its way through many of those recommendations. And in some areas there have been some very direct changes in the law, for example, one of the recommendations was that 
uh, there be a comprehensive prohibition on torture um, enshrined in legislation in Australia. And the government has now taken steps and has enacted legislation to do that. And in terms of many of our other recommendations, uh, it's been the impetus for there to be inquiries uh, into whether or not the law needs to be changed. So. Uh, I guess maybe it's too short now to talk about all of the, the impacts that we've had, but, but certainly in a very broad range of areas there's been some very uh, significant and, and real impacts. Sometimes the UN and Geneva can feel like a very far away place, it can seem like a, a foreign place, it can seem like a bit of a, a bubble that doesn't have the proper understanding necessarily of, of what's happening on the ground. So. Uh, I guess any opportunities that there can be to, to bridge that, that divide, to bring the grassroots uh, people and organisations closer to Geneva, but also to bring Geneva and the United Nations closer to those people working on the ground, I think is uh, both a, a lesson and a perspective that, that's really valuable. So uh, the role that ISHR can play in that sense is, uh, is really invaluable. It's uh, I guess both the uh, opportunity to bring people together to talk and share about experiences, but also just as importantly to, to demystify the, the United Nations system, to have a look at what mechanisms are available, how they can be used to actually realise rights uh, on the ground uh, back home and obviously to, to help the people that we work with on a, on a daily basis to improve the situation that, that they find themselves in.